beautiful friends, beautiful souls. I hope that you're having an amazing day. Today is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024, coming at you from Sedona, Arizona, just at the top of the noon hour when I am recording this. And the time has arrived to vibe with your tribe and feed that prediction addiction, baby. Oh yeah, and we're just less than a week away from this great solar return eclipse that is said to be that of biblical proportion. But really, will it be? This is also backed up by the Mercury retrograde that kicked into high gear just yesterday and the continuous flow of energy, energy waves, tsunami waves of energy. The first one that came in on the 25th of, uh, 25th of March, the full moon eclipse, whatever date that was. And we're going to have more coming in on the new moon, of course, with the eclipse that's coming. And the full moon that comes up on April 23rd. It's going to be intense, friends. And this is why I tell you, y'all, it's about to get real. And I mean real, y'all. Very real. Last week, we witnessed my vision of a bridge collapse coming into fruition, sadly, in Baltimore, Maryland. Spirit warned us that there would be more coming, including describing to me last week, if you recall, if you tuned in last week, I shared with you a vision that I had of a freight ship going high speed into a port, ramming into the port, knocking over whatever was in the way. Well, guess what just happened? In the country of Turkey, that's exactly what happened. A, a lo and behold, this freight liner rammed right into a port in Turkey, knocking over at least several cranes. Well, interesting, huh? But was that actually the vision that I saw? We're going to compare that footage to my visions. And I'm going to let you know whether that's actually the one I saw or perhaps more likely that there's another one coming on the way. Not only that, we just had a barge slam into a bridge in Oklahoma. The state officials had to close the bridge for a little while and opened it back up. Not a disaster, thankfully. But if somebody fishing didn't catch that on film, nobody would have ever known. And they wouldn't have been able to inspect the bridge. Today, I'm going to share with you what I believe a future target's going to be. In accordance to a vision that I had, a dream that a good friend of mine has, who has very prophetic dreams, analyzing that, putting it together with a few things that Spirit showed me, and I believe we have a target. I'm not saying it's the next target, but I do believe, without a doubt, it's a target in the future. And I'm going to tell you where that is. And I'll give you a hint. It's in the state of Massachusetts. But you got to listen to it first in the details. So the Obama movie, Leave the World Behind, was released back on November 22nd, 1122. And if you follow me long enough and or you know about numbers, then you know the global elite use these numbers and dates to play out their agendas. Like the, what happened to JFK. Because it was November 22nd that JFK was taken out. What year? 1969, I believe. Whatever year it was. Sad, sad event that happened on that date. Using both those numbers, the 11 and the 22. A purposeful thing that they like to do. So they launched that movie, Leave the World Behind, on the same date, 11-22. Is, there a, is this like a sacrifice of information in our faces? Because, you know, they got to put things in our faces and their agendas some form or another. We had the Illuminati cards that I've showed you many, multiple times. Actually, I should put that on my list of videos to do. There's still many cards I don't have yet, but I'll have to, I'll have to put that at the top of my list. I forgot all about that one, actually. So they put things in our faces, always. So think about this for a minute, friends. The first thing that happened in that movie, the very first thing is that their cellular phones went out. On February 22nd, there's that 22 again. In the United States, anyway, there was, and then we got 222. We got the triple, triple two combo on February 22nd. Very powerful, powerful alignment and, and collaboration of numbers. And there were cellular providers that reported cell outages lasting up to 13 hours. Remember that? People were panicking because they didn't have their phones. A massive disruption that was to cell service. Exactly what they showed in Leave the World Behind. Second thing in that movie was a cargo ship sailing off course and crashing into beaches and whatever else, you know, we can use our imaginations there. 
we all know what happened in, of course, Maryland last week with the runaway freight ship versus the bridge. So could there be something else perhaps in that movie that could play out in our near future in real time? There is, and I'm going to tell you about that today. AT&T just announced a huge data breach, huge, and it was from their old customers, and I happen to be one of those old customers, which is really basic, basically AT&T calling it a data breach is really just a nice way of saying that they fell victim to a cyber attack because let's, let's speak truth here, friends. That's what it was. It was a hack, a hack attack, a cyber attack, all, all related. Not just a data breach. They try to make it sound all fancy, like, oh, don't worry, it's just a data breach. We weren't cyber hacked attacked. <laughs> just a month ago, again, we saw AT&T, Verizon, and others lose service, blaming it on the software patch back on February 22nd. They said it was a software patch. Did they use, all, use the same software? Well, I know they do use the same, same towers. We have come to discover... Now, recently, too, especially that our infrastructure and our computing systems are extremely vulnerable, extremely vulnerable, and there's more to come when we get to the month of April, which we just stepped into, as we experience communication breakdowns. I'm going to tell you all about that today and what I believe and feel strongly will and will not happen. So back in my world predictions for 2024 which I did back in December and on the platforms that went up on the first of the year, like it always does on New Year's Day. But if we go back to those and rewind the 2024 world predictions, I said that there was going to be a huge, well, Spirit said to me, and I told you that Spirit said that there's going to be a huge problem and a big focus when it comes to squatters in 2024. Well, that's basically gone viral over the past few weeks. In many viral videos, including this disturbable, dis very disturbing viral video of an illegal telling other illegals in their own language to raid Americans' empty homes and take them over. Exactly what Spirit said back in December is actually even worse than we could have actually even imagined. So what does this look like in the future when it comes to the squatter issue? It's going to get worse before it gets better, unfortunately. Just recently... We reviewed my past predictions for the water wars go back a couple years ago, along with a bunch of new predictions I put out revolved around water. I think that was a couple weeks ago. Was it last week? A couple weeks ago, sometime in the past month, including Spirit telling us, if you recall, that the water would become tainted in one town or city in America. And this just played out in Michigan after Big Pharma Company, of course dumped over a 1,000 gallons of toxic, dangerous chemicals into the river, causing officials to actually close off river access. Hmm. But we're not hearing about this on mass media. Of course not. It's like another Flint, Michigan, caused by Big Pharma. Which should have you asking the question, why is Big Pharma using extremely toxic chemicals? Well, of course, that's what they use in their medications. Toxicity. Lots of it. They have good stuff too, but most of it's toxic. They're drug dealers in the modern day times. So this water being tainted uh, by, by Big Pharma, this is just a small warning is what Spirit says. Just a small warning as to how concerned we need to be about our water supplies. Nostradamus said water would become worth its weight in gold, and it's heading that way very, very, very quickly. And that's what Spirit shows me. Things are going to happen like that. Snap, quick, super quick, and shocking, shockingly fast. Remember, we enter into the new Earth nation by the year 2032. So an awful lot of prophecy and an awful lot of things got to happen between now and 2032. And that's not that far around the corner, friends. Not that far at all. So we're going to look at the water situation again today. Uh, because water is life. And without water, we don't survive. Our plants don't survive or nothing. So we're going to talk about that and, and, and touch base on that. Why was a Chinese immigrant, and actually this happened multiple times. We're only hearing about the one story. But if you dig deeply in that rabbit hole, there's several stories of Chinese immigrants, illegals, by the way, being found wandering around on our military bases, including a military base out there in California. 
This is very alarming, friends. This is very alarming, and it could be very well make sense to one of my past predictions. When from April's predictions, in the if you didn't see April's prediction video, make sure you check that out. But in April predictions, I said that China, along with Iran and Russia, were planning an attack on the United States. So could this be how they get, you know, is this why they're wandering in on our military Terry bases? And how the heck are they getting on there? Being found wandering around. How they get past the gates to begin with? That's what that's the alarming question that I have. We know that China is buying up all our farmland using cyber attacks against our bridges and ports now, sending thousands of young military aged Chinese over our borders into our countries, not just the United States, France, UK, and others as well. So that's what they're doing. While, you know, freely suddenly wandering around in our military bases. <laughs> that's not normal, friends. Not normal at all. Well, so, should we be concerned? Oh, well, yeah, of course we should. Of course we should, and I'm going to explain a little bit about this today. The strange email that was just put out by Airbnb. And an even stranger new policy change that's going into effect that you're going to want to hear whether or not you're ever going to rent an Airbnb. Remember, signs are all around us. I'm going to tell you about this new policy that goes into effect and when it goes into effect and why it seems so creepy and odd. We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more on this episode number 111, friends. 111, a magical episode indeed of Tuesday's Prediction Update. And y'all know what time it is. It's tea time, baby. Beautiful friends, beautiful souls, once again, I hope that you're having an amazing day here in Sedona. It's Tuesday, April 2nd. I do know that it's April 3rd on other parts of our beautiful planet Earth. If you're new here, I welcome you to the channel. And if you want accurate predictions, prophecy, truth, you found the perfect tribe, baby. Smash that there, subscribe. Also, hit the bell, followed by all, so that you get notifications. And I thank all of my supporters who make this free content possible for everybody else. I couldn't do it without you. I appreciate you with infinite love and gratitude. Whether you're a member of the tribe down below on YouTube or whether you send contributions through Spotify, Rumble, or any other platform, or the links down below for PayPal or what have you. But most importantly, down below in the description, you're going to find a link to my newsletter. Just put out the April newsletter. You're not going to want to miss that. So open that baby up and read it. It'll give you a whole outline of the month of April. Send out. I try to send out a couple newsletters per month to keep you updated so you never miss content. You know what classes are coming up. And often special discounts on classes or private sessions. And if you want more information about private sessions, visit me at josephtittle.com. T-I-T-T-E-L or spiritmanjt.com. Take you to the same place. And thank all my subscribers on the Awaken Your Spirit subscribe star platform and everybody else. And showing your love, a lot of energy, a lot of time, and a lot of patience goes into making this content every Tuesday. It takes way longer than you would imagine. And I appreciate you showing your love by clicking that love button. That's the one that looks like the thumbs up. I appreciate that. So shall we move on? Oh, one other thing, too, I wanted to tell you is beware of fake profiles. And people messaging you under profiles that may appear to be me because they stole the pictures off of my pages, created their own fake profiles. And here's how you catch these profiles, friends. When you get these messages from people, because it's not just me, they're targeting anybody that has a big following or even a smaller following. Doesn't matter. They're targeting anybody they can. And what they do is they take your pictures and they steal them and they create a fake profile. Go to the profile, friends. Click on the pictures and look at the date. You'll see they're all uploaded on the same day, sometimes within two days. That's, a, that's the first, first clue to let you know that it's a fake profile. I will never send you a private message through any social media platform ever, ever, whatsoever. <laughs> so it's not me, friends. Do not. I would never ask for money, gift cards, or again, message you with messages from spirit. Uh-uh. Not unless it's coming from directly from my office at josephtittle.com. Otherwise, it is not me. 
So other than that, again, thank you all. Let's move on to episode number 111 of Tea Time, baby. Welcome to April 2024 in the season of Aries. We are just less than a week away of stepping into the great solar return eclipse, an event that's being backed up by the intense Mercury retrograde in the sign of Aries that went direct just yesterday. So if you're feeling a bit wonky, you're feeling a little odd, maybe emotional, well, hang on tight. The ride only just took off. This roller coaster ride just took off, and it's a long ride, taking us through into the month of May. May will be a very, very magical month, actually. Much different than what we're going to experience in the month of April. There's such an energy flow of energy waves flowing in. And usually there's just one big energy shift wave that comes in during these cycles which we have three to four a year. This particular cycle has got three big waves coming in of energy that Spirit showed me. I, I've never seen that before. I've been following these cycles for decades now. It's truly a very, very powerful, yet a very, very magical month that's ahead of us. So know that, of course, it's going to be challenging both when it comes to universally on the planet and when it comes to you and your personal lives as well. But, there's a big but there, friends. But, this will all lead in the end to amazing breakthroughs and will open up new pathways to the future that come about in the month of May. So remember that, that April's challenges lead to doorways opening up in the month of May. You're, you're also going to notice, perhaps you already have, changes in your energy some days feeling drained and tired, while other days you may suddenly have a boost of energy. And you will get those. So take advantage of those boosts of energy that come flowing in so that you can help utilize that to clear your blockages and barriers. Really important. Pay close attention to your dreams. And more importantly, pay attention to your emotions. It's going to be an emotional cycle. You may find yourself bathing in past issues or past emotions. Utilize this as a time to pull the plunger out. And, and, and get that dirty water down the drain where it needs to go. Take advantage. This is a powerful healing cycle as well, friends. Remember, Spirit told us to stay very hydrated, drink lots of water, and avoid anything toxic to the body, mind, or spirit. Allow yourself to utilize the energy to heal yourself. And those of you that, you know, heal yourself of all those past pains and all those past hurts. Address things that need to be addressed. Indeed, again, this is both a powerful and magical time, and we are all so very, very fortunate, whether you believe it or not, to be on the earth bathing in these energies and witnessing the amazing yet very crazy events that are going to play out in our world and usher us into the new earth nation by the time we reach 2032. It's going to be wild. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, my fair lady. Remember me singing and serenading that song? Well, I say to you, oh, ship, we're in trouble. <laughs> ship, we are definitely in trouble. Y'all may recall me singing that to you just recently, actually, and a few months before the Queen's passing. The first time we heard Spirit serenading me with that song and I serenaded you with that song, we knew it was the code for the Queen's passing. And that's and I, you know, said that just a few months and even said that the month that I thought she would pass, which ended up being the exact month, I don't remember now, but whatever month she passed, Spirit did call that very specifically. Although, you know, all of a sudden, just recently, I started serenading you with that song again, London Bridge has fallen down couple weeks ago popped up a week later to the day actually exactly a week later or six days later I guess it would be no it was 1 30 in the morning when that happened so yeah uh, seven days later we saw what happened in Baltimore Maryland last week I just I think it was yeah no two weeks ago because last week is when the bridge fell so two weeks ago is when I was singing that song to you and we witnessed also coming into fruition that vision I had back in December if you can go back and listen to yourself, I played it on last week's show, the clip, but it was December's forecast and predictions where I saw the vision of a bridge collapsing. And again, we know that came into fruition, sadly. Spirit warned that we would be, we would be, you know, seeing more of that. I even described to you last week a specific vision in which I saw a ship 
literally ramming into a port and it felt like a purposeful event to me. They're all purposeful, Spirit just said. Oh, Spirit's here. Hey, Spirit's. Loud little group of spirits I have here. Love them. Gotta love them. So Spirit did warn us, and I saw that vision. And well, lo and behold, a ship just crashed into a port. I think it was yesterday, the day before, in the country of Turkey. Interesting, huh? Take a look at this, this here footage. As you see here, the ship is coming into the port as if the ship captain steered the ship in the opposite direction of which, in which he should have steered the trip, ship. So was this an accident or is it China targeting ports like Spirit told us just last week? Spirit said that. So here's another close-up version of this. Check this out. So was that vision I was seeing or was that the vision I was seeing or is there another? So was that the vision I was seeing or is there going to be another? There was also a barge that hit and slammed into a bridge in Oklahoma, causing the Oklahoma State Patrol to close down the bridge and divert traffic. So who's next? What's next? We know. We all know things are coming. The hit on Maryland Bridge, yes, I do say it was a hit. That's what Spirit told us, and it was very symbolic, if you didn't realize. And I didn't know all this last week because I only just heard about it right before I filmed last week's episode. So I didn't know until now that, that well, right after I filmed, actually, that the Francis Scott is the gentleman who wrote the Star Spangled Banner, a direct hit on our freedom. Remember that spirit told us that China, Iran, and Russia, but Russia would back out. China is currently, if you're not aware, rebuilding the Silk Road that we learned about back in elementary school. The Silk Road, they're rebuilding it. They're taking over ports all over the world. And they want to take over our ports and our resources as well. They want to rule the world in a very communist type of way and fashion. In the end, spirit does assure us that they will fail. In the end. It'll appear, Spirit says, it'll appear like they are winning and they're getting their way. But in the long run, the light will shine and the people will awaken and they will lose. And the light wins in the end. Oh, thanks, Spirits. So a, a good friend of mine who's really, really uh, awesome and has some pretty wild prophetic dreams. And when he does, we often do a brainstorming interpretation and I hope this microphone's cutting out all the construction noise that's going on around me. It's very distracting. So he has prophetic dreams that are pretty wild. And when he does, we get together sometimes and do brainstorm interpretation. I'm really good at interpreting people's dreams. Not always my own, but I'm really good at interpreting other people's dreams. So and please don't ask me in the comments to interpret your dream. So we brainstorm together about this dream, and I'm not going to go through all the details, but long story short, the focus took us through his dream in an odd way, but it pointed directly to the state of Massachusetts. And again, I won't go into this particular dream we discussed as it actually does still need some interpretation. But um, in our brainstorming, spirit showed me, it popped into my brain, the Boston Marathon came to mind. So we looked it up. It just so happens that the... 128th Boston Marathon is coming up on Monday, April 15th, which actually happens to also be tax day here in America. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. So we all know what happened there in the past in Boston, the marathon in the past. And I'm not at all saying, so don't, don't, don't twist my words. I'm not at all saying that's what's going to happen again. I'm not, not even thinking that's necessarily at all the case. As this would be more related to pulling me 
in this interpretation of the dream to a specific area. That's how I took it. When Spirit said, showed me the Boston Marathon, and I had a vision of the people running. I didn't see anything bad happening. So no worries about that. I just saw their path that they were running. So the next thing we did was look to see if there was a bridge that they ran across. Any bridges nearby. And remember, we also have the Boston Tea Party, right? We have the Boston Tea Party. We have that along with the April 15th tax date. And this also happens to be the 128th marathon, which in the realm of numerology breaks down to an 11 and a 2, of course, as well. But we always go with the 11 and the 22 first when they pop up breaking down numbers. And then you break it down again to a single digit number. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So 128th is an 11. That's kind of weird. An 11 vibration and things do happen very often around these 11 and 22 vibrations. They do not cross any bridges that, that I could see. And then again, in the comments, anybody in Boston, I know we got friends in Boston. Let us know down below. But I follow the route and I didn't see it crossing any important bridges. It has to be important. It has to be symbolic. And I didn't see that in the route. But I did take notice to the end of the marathon, the finish line. That's what I took notice to. And the closest nearby bridge to that that would be somewhat significant would be the Leonard P. Zockham Bunker Hill Memorial Bridge. That's a long, long name for a bridge. Leonard P. Zockham Bunker Hill <laughs> Memorial Bridge, which is Interstate 90. Very important route going through Boston. That bridge, now that, that's the closest one that looked important. There's a couple bridges there where the finish line is, but that seemed to be the most important one coming into the you know, bay or whatever that is there where the Boston Tea Party was. Kind of interesting, right? So not only that, that bridge, remember we have the one in Maryland named after the guy that wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Well, this guy, um, Leonard P. Zackham, was a civil rights activist. Hmm. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm, right? So think about that. I'd say that's very symbolic indeed. So overall, the feeling is that some type of an attack will play out in Boston. Sorry, construction out front is throwing me off. I don't know what these people are doing. Again, let me do that again. Overall... Overall, putting this all together, the feeling to me is that there's some type of an attack that is going to play out in Boston, Massachusetts. Perhaps, perhaps on April 15th, specifically, during the Boston Marathon. Not necessarily at the Boston Marathon. So let me be clear about that. Again, I take Spirit's nudge towards the Boston Marathon as a way to show us Boston as a target. Not necessarily at all of the marathon. And maybe even taking us to that date, April 15th. And a reminder that of the past hor horrific event that happened there that played out in Boston in the past at the marathon. Perhaps this is something else that Spirit is showing us, like something big, like that goes, you know, like that, boom. Maybe something like that, perhaps. But again, I don't relate this to the marathon. I just relate the marathon to taking me to Boston specifically. And perhaps the finish line being close to that bridge. So, you know, some things and visions have to be interpreted. And sometimes it's easy to interpret certain things. And sometimes it's, it's a lot of interpretation, especially when it comes to dreams. So now here's the other thing, too, that I thought was really important because the past horrific event that played out in Boston. But perhaps this could be some kind of an event more related to ships and bridges. Uh, that's kind of how how it went with the dream and just a few things that spirit added into it so already being an issue that we have going on is mars conjunct with saturn that takes place on april 10th mars conjunct with saturn highlights water events so this could point to my visions and and things uh and my friend's dream to being another bridge because bridges cross water so or a port type of issue in the water happening on April 15th in Boston, Massachusetts. So our friends in Boston, be very safe, be very mindful. I'm not worried about the runners. I don't feel like necessarily it's affecting them. 
I mean, it could be, but I'm not feeling like that's the case. We were more focused with the dream, what he received, and the information that Spirit added on a bridge in Boston or the port or both in Boston, Massachusetts will be a target in the month of April, I believe. Perhaps on April 15th, tax day. We'll have to see. Let's hold Boston in the light and with love, knowing that if anything's being demised in Boston, let it be broke and, and, and people arrest it before it happens. So the bridge collapse, of course, the one in Maryland is going to cause supply chain issues. And that's going to, in turn, cause a huge increase on items in towns and in, in, in the epicenter. So Baltimore. The bridge already has affected over 8,000 jobs at the ports in Maryland. And ships were, I don't know if they still are, but they were stuck at port. Others were stuck outside the port trying to get in. They couldn't make deliveries. So the Maryland Bridge, and now we have the port in Turkey, Spirit says is just small warnings for what is to come. And that we would all be in for, for this would be really important sign to also do what Spirit has been telling us since 2020. Stock up. Be prepared always, no matter what. How be prepared? Have enough water, or a close by water source that you can get water, knowing that that you'll be able to, like the creek down the road, have water straws if you need them, to to filter out the water, food, anything. If you need to cook, make sure you have a grill with propane or whatever you need. Just you should always have that, always. If you can and it's affordable, get yourself an electric generator just in case. Preferably, I just got one and it's the battery kind that is solar, solar, so they can run in your house. So if you're in a city, you don't want to run a generator outside. Someone's going to steal it or they're going to know you're there. Just saying, if something really bad happened, you want to be able to bunker down without people knowing you're bunkered down. So just some things to think about and consider, friends. Moving on. Don't. Leave the world behind. Leave the world behind is the name of the movie. But I say don't. Don't leave the world behind. The Obama movie, Leave the World Behind, I just watched it again for the second time. And I mentioned in the beginning of the broadcast that they officially released, the official release was 11-22, November 22nd. The same date that was utilized to take out JFK, unfortunately. Very powerful combination of numbers, the 11 and the 22. I would expect probably something big to happen this year. That just came to me on 11-22. But we're not going to rush November right now. Let's just stay focused on April. We got a lot going on in the month of April. We're not going to jump ahead to the future right now. I mean, we already have in predictions because we never know when specific predictions are going to come into fruition. So we have in that movie, you know, we know the global elite like to use numbers. We know that. The 11, the 22, um, the 14th is another one. Friday's the 13th. So they use all different ones specifically for specific things for their huge sacrifice, sacrificial agendas. Yeah, there we go. That's a good way of putting it. So now think about this for a minute. The very first thing that happened in that movie was that their cellular, there was a cellular outage, right? And that's the first thing that happened in the movie. They couldn't use their cell phones all of a sudden. Don't know why, but they couldn't. Well, we know why, because it was a cyber attack. Now, on February 22nd, you know, uh, well, I was going to say last month, but we're in April now, so two months ago, on February 22nd, another 22 day, you know, you probably are aware that all the cell phones in part of the United States went out for up to 13 hours, not all of them. But certain, I think it was more the East Coast. It didn't happen here. I didn't notice anything here on the West Coast. But up to 13 hours. That they blamed on some type of software patch issue. But regardless, it was a massive dis disruption to cell phones. And we weren't in a Mercury retrograde back then. We're in Mercury retrograde now. If you're not familiar, Mercury retrograde is notorious for affecting communications, electronics, and motorized items. Things break down. Things go haywire. Expect, you know... Carry cash with you, always have cash with you, especially now because you may not be able to access cash. The bank machines could go down. All these are strong potentials during a Mercury retrograde. So for cell phones to go out like they did back in February, no retrograde on February 22nd, which happened to be what? How many months later after the movie? Three months after the movie. Exactly to the day. 
three months to the day, the 22nd, 1122 to February 22nd. Friends, I don't know about you, but I don't believe in coincidences. The second thing that happened in that movie was a cargo ship sailing off course and crashing into the beaches and whatever else they were crashing into. And we all know what happened again in Maryland and what played out there. So in the, mo- the ship in the movie had written on it, White Lion. We can go back to the year 1619 when the White Lion was the ship that brought the first group of Africans over to the United States, to the East Coast, to a settlement in Virginia. So very symbolic there too you don't th- they use that word remember obama is behind that movie they use that word purposely so that was the second thing that happened in the movie and we saw again what happened in february and then we have march with the ship what's going to happen in april a cyber attack friends no doubt about it multiple cyber attacks so i watched that movie again for a second time and this is something i noticed in the movie that's really kind of strange and creepy I thought it was because I didn't take notice to this clip when I first watched the movie, but I wasn't really looking like I was last night when I watched it. So take a look at this clip, which actually shows a solar eclipse. Look at it. A solar eclipse, except it's not from the earth. It's a solar eclipse from the moon. And it ends up showing you the tethered American flag as it pans outwards, still on the moon's surface. So a solar eclipse from the moon. So, you know, it's like reverse psychology if you ask me. But for some reason, I didn't notice that when I first watched it. Or I didn't. I just didn't pay attention to it. I watched that clip like five times. And then I made a point to show it to you today. Yep. So regardless... It's still a solar eclipse, whether it's a solar eclipse from the moon or a solar eclipse from the earth. It's still a solar eclipse. I thought that was really strange, really strange. So, and I'm not saying that that's all going to happen. This, this cyber attack on the solar eclipse, something's going to happen. No doubt about it. But not all the gloom and doom that people think it's going to ignite on an awakening and it's only just igniting it takes a while to get that fire going before it turns into a wildfire and that that's what's coming for for the world people turning into wildfires standing up stepping up stepping into our power taking our power back and it's going to be amazing it's just the challenge is to get us there but always stay focused at the finish line don't stay focused on what, what you're running through stay focused on the finish line the new earth the five-dimensional earth where all people come together in pure love. What an amazing thing. And I hope I make it that far to see it. I believe I will. And I hope you make it that far as well. So you think any of this is coincidence? Do you think like Obama making this movie, especially because it was made by Obama, you think there's a coincidence here? I do not. They put that movie all out in November. Hmm, wasn't there an eclipse? Well, there's always two eclipses a year. So wasn't there one in October? Then this movie, now we have this biblical proportion event with the eclipse on April 8th. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Right? So now we have have this little girl in the movie. This I thought was interesting too. The little girl in the movie was wearing a NASA shirt. I forget what the boy's shirt was significant too, but in this point, the NASA shirt. Is it a coincidence that NASA's shooting three rockets up towards the moon, I think it is? During the solar eclipse, at the same time, CERN, the Hydron Collider is firing up too on the eclipse. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. (laughs) And now CERN is going to build a bigger CERN. Hmm. CERN is going to build a bigger CERN that's going to be deeper and bigger. It's going to be more than 50 miles. I think it's 63 miles, I think is the number. But it's more than 50 miles. I know that. In circumference, bigger, more powerful. And they plan to have that done. Their goal is to have it done by the time the next similar eclipse comes. And I think that's 2045. I'm pretty sure it's 2045. So they want to, they're going to do this one on this eclipse, but they want to build one bigger for the next eclipse. They ain't going to, they, I can't see that even being around when we get to 2045. 
This earth is going to be a completely, completely different place by 2045. The maps, everything, especially when the comet Apophis comes by the first round in 2029, goes around the sun and comes back by us again in 2036. That window of time is going to be intense for the earth. And it's not in the fear, it's something to embrace. Mother Earth's done this many times before, and you may have lived in a past life when that happened. And that could be where your fear is attached to. So if you have fear and, oh my God, the Earth's going to crack in half, tap into your past life. That's probably where you're getting it from. So here's another thing I thought was really, really interesting about the eclipse. And I'm going to do a whole eclipse video, but I just wanted to put this out to you because I just thought it was kind of odd and interesting at the same time. Niagara state of emergency is being declared in Niagara Falls over a total solar eclipse. A state of emergency has been declared near Niagara Falls to prepare for this month's total solar eclipse amid expectations that hundreds of thousands of tourists will visit the area. The Ontario, Canada region of Niagara Falls declared the emergency ahead of the April 8th eclipse, which be the first to touch the province since 1979. Interesting. I didn't know that. National Geographic has said that Niagara Falls is one of the best places to see it. Yeah, maybe they are saying that purposely because they want people to gather at Niagara Falls. I mean, nothing surprises me with the psychopaths that run this world or like to believe that they run this world. Crazy, friends. Crazy. Let's move on to some hack attacks. Because it all kind of weaves together as a web of darkness. And the whole premise of that movie, Leave the World Behind, starts with basically a cyber attack, really. First on the phones, then on the ships, and then on vehicles. And even aeroplanes, right? Remember the aeroplanes coming out of the skies? And I didn't know that. I, I just asked a friend that. I'm like, is that possible? Can they hack an airplane? He's like, oh, yeah, they can. I'm like, who the heck was the less than smart person to invent such technology? Why would you invent technology that flies groups of people into the air hackable? It's just crazy to me. I don't know what you think, but I think it's kind of crazy. The FBI and other three-letter agencies, including the Pentagon, have just put out continuous warnings of coming cyber attacks. Not Eclipse, they're warning us about that too, but coming cyber attacks. I read that to you about a month ago, the whole thing that they put out, the FBI or CIA or all of them, whoever... And Spirit did warn us, same time last year, about a year ago, about coming cyber attacks. Might have even done a cyber attack video, or it might have been one of the titles of one of the shows. But I remember Turk talking about that. And just last month, we just saw AT&T, Verizon, and others, well, not last month, in February, losing their service and blaming it on that software patch. And now we come to discover that our infrastructure and computing systems are extremely vulnerable and there is um, more to come in this month of April, without a doubt, as we experience these communication breakdowns. Communication breakdown, drive me insane. A little Led Zeppelin for you. <laughs> but no, really, you're going to be singing that song. You're going to be looking that song up right now, Communication Breakdown by Led Zeppelin. You're going to be playing that because that's what's going to be happening. Communication breakdowns, not just with electronics and motorized stuff, but with people as well. Communication is important. So, yes, in April, we're going to definitely experience some cell phone outages once again, especially on the east coast of the United States when the systems get overloaded, according to Spirit, especially people going live. That's going to affect platforms like YouTube. Spirit's telling me that now. Many people, so many people going live at the same time is going to throw a wrench into their gears that keep it running. Whether it be YouTube, Rumble, even Facebook or whatever. So that's interesting. Spirit just said that. And yet it's more of an overload. So, you know, they're right in warning people about their cell phones and so forth. So that's interesting. And we're also going to see internet outages. And it's not just the United States, by the way. Spirit says, not United States, but some countries to watch very closely are the closest allies to United States. So whether that be Israel, UK, England, France. So we will see internet outages mostly in smaller countries. 
and even a satellite outage affecting television networks. And if not in the month of April, definitely between now and the month of November. Remember, Spirit said April, August, and then October, November were the most intense months of the year. April being the first of the most intense. It ignites things. It doesn't mean it's all happening in April, but April's definitely igniting craziness on our planet. Speaking of craziness, so yeah, we're going to see more cyber stuff, unfortunately. I hope I'm wrong about Massachusetts. I'll help just I'll help them wrong about bridges in general. But I know I'm not because Spirit assured me that China and Iran are working very hard on taking out ports, especially China, because they want control of the ports and they also want to starve us out. Interesting. Well, yeah, they work very closely with the WEF and the gates, the gates of hell. Yes, they all work together, friends, in the web of darkness. Speaking of working together, they're also working together to take over your homes, friends. They want to take over your home. They want to take control. You are going to own nothing and be happy, according to WEF. It's right on their website. We have BlackRock buying up millions and millions of homes all over the world in a very criminal type of fashion. So back in my world predictions, because America is now becoming the squatter heaven for squatters. America is squatter heaven, friends. Squatter heaven. Because back in my 2024 predictions, Spirit told us that squatters were going to become a huge problem and a huge focus in 2024. That is exactly what just started happening all of a sudden, hearing lately all over the internet, just mainly because of the one woman in New York City who was arrested. Arrested. The guy broke into our house was able to show something on his phone and the cops arrested her. Hmm. Something very, very wrong with this. I remember my aunt used to say she owned apartments and houses that she rented out. She said, whatever you do, don't ever become a landlord. They're taking every, and this was 20 years ago. She said that. And yeah, so landlords losing their rights and these squatters getting in. And did you see that viral video? I'm not going to play it for you today because it makes me want to vomit. And I don't want to vomit in front of y'all, beautiful friends. <laughs> so the video of that guy, that shaved head, his head shaved, and he's going off in another language talking about invade America, invade their empty homes, that there's laws in states. And he's right. There's laws in states that say you stay in that house, you can fix it up and then turn around and sell it. Let me tell you, you do that at my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to just stay positive in the high vibration. And I'm not going to tell you what would happen to them if they did that to me. This stuff comes back on you. Always stay in the light, friends. Stay in the light, Carolyn. There's peace in the light. So, yeah, now we have this viral video and all these illegals uh, now being aware that they can come over to America, start taking our homes. Friends, if you got empty homes, you need to have security cameras. Regardless, if you go on vacation, I saw another one video yesterday. Um, somebody went away on vacation for a week and came back and couldn't get back into their own home. They wouldn't even let them into their own home. They live there too. It's on their card. How's that work? The police take it as a civil matter and say, oh, you got to let the judge sort it out. Police aren't doing their job. They know darn right well that it's not a civil matter. It's breaking and entering. See, but it gets mixed up because then there's those that, you know, bad landlords that accuse people of squatting when they're not. And there's a bigger, deeper story. So, you know, got to blame some of the bad landlords on top of it. It's going to get crazy, friends. Spirit warned us back in December it's going to get worse. And I would have never imagined or thought that it was going to be to the point that they're putting out viral videos telling you to take over people's houses. That dude was paid to do that. They told him to make that video. They pushed that video to the top of the rank. That video should have been taken down. Isn't that against guideline policies? Telling people to break in and steal people's homes? That should be totally against guideline policies. It just goes to show that there's a deep, this stems from a very, very dark agenda. And BlackRock, again, buying up millions and millions of homes and doing it in a very cheap, full, um, nefarious way. So, well, friends, I have to be honest with you. It's not looking very good, especially for homeowners right now in America or no matter where you live. 
it's a seller's market right now. It's definitely not a buyer's market. And remember, BlackRock, again, purposely continues to buy up all the develop. They're buying up whole developments and then turn around. They're not selling them. They're renting them out. And they'll probably be um, slumlords, I bet you. So they're buying up everything. And they're literally doing so to help the United Nations and the WEF fulfill their 2030 agenda. And that 2030 agenda, there's a whole list. You can go find it right on their website, but it's you will own nothing and be happy. That's sick. That's demented. And that's what they think is going to happen in their sick, demented minds. And they're doing a good job in pushing to make it happen. So the great conflict against squatters is only just kicking off in 2024, just as Spirit told us it would. The squatter issue will spread to other countries as well, which I expect that it already is, especially in places such as the UK. So in many places, it's going to get really, really dirty. In one state, it won't be until someone, such as a mayor or a senator, has a run-in with some squatters of his own that leaves them just as screwed as other homeowners. That's when the wake-up call will come. Due to the failed laws, of course, and purposely put into place to sabotage homeowners and landlords. Crazy. So we're going to see that happen to a senator or somebody in the government, is what Spirit said. I look forward to that one, where that happens to them and then they can't get them out of their house. You saw the other group in... Um, California, the $3 million mansion that the police can't get them to stop having big parties and all. How do you not get these people out? They're not, they're trespassing. I don't get it. So some states, Spirit says, such as what we just saw in Florida, are going to change their laws, allowing property owners the protection they deserve. We will begin to see many cases of landlords and property owners going cray cray, taking the law in their own hands. Some to the point of destruction, if you know what I mean. So don't let it drive you to that, friends. Don't let it do it. Don't let it do it. But interesting, huh? Crazy, sad, and disappointing, all wrapped up in one. I'm glad I'm not a landlord. Water is life, friends. Water is sacred, as we all know. This particular flyer goes back to Standing Rock Reservation and the fight over the pipeline and the Black Snake Prophecy, a video of mine that actually went quite viral in my world anyway. I think there's close to a half a million views on that video. It was my first ever true edited video. You got to check it out. I thought I did a pretty darn good job at it. I mean, it did go viral, well, at least a half a million views. I'll try to put a link up to that video there. We just talked about water last week, the week before. And I feel like we're going to be talking about water an awful lot now and moving into the future. Water is life. And there's a big fight for water. And Nostradamus said water would become worth its weight in gold. It's already happened. We've seen Africa fighting for water for the longest time and, you know, receiving water. And there's great organizations going around putting wells in. But what happens when the well goes dry? That happened to us here in this little, little community. So and then you're panicking on what to do next. And it's a lot of money. So a few years back in my worldly predictions, world, world, yearly world predictions, worldly predictions, that's a good one. My yearly predictions, this was years ago. I think it might even be 2020 predictions for 2020, 2021, somewhere around there, where we talked about future water wars. And Spirit told us there would literally be conflicts over water igniting. And when I talked about water a week or two ago, I said that there was going to be an incident where water was going to be tainted, and it reminded me of Flint, Michigan. Well, it just so happened to be Michigan. Where, you know, uh, a company just dumped over a thousand gallons of toxic waste into the river in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Is that why Spirit showed me Flint, Michigan? To say it's going to happen in Michigan? Kind of interesting, right? See how Spirit works? That's what it popped in my mind when Spirit showed me that the water is going to become tainted. And it happened. And the company that did it rhymes with miser. You can figure that one out. Big Pharma. What are they using toxic chemicals for in their water? That's insane to me. And their medication, I mean. Sorry, not their water. 
and their medication. It's just crazy to me. That's the only thing I wanted to mention about water. I didn't want to go in. We just talked about water just recently. I did a bunch of predictions revolved around water so you can go back. But I just wanted to mention that particular prediction coming into fruition. Now I wanted to move on to some pow pow events. Because I felt like Easter was going to be a big day for pow pow events. I had a strong feeling. And if you remember, put out a warning of feelings that um, there was going to be some kind of big event revolved around pow pow events occurring on Easter Sunday. Thankfully, it was not a church as I thought it could have been and may have probably said it could have been. It was actually the folks in Chicago who really, really felt the brunt of the pow pow events on Easter. Spirit warned Chicago time after time, time after time. <laughs> Right? Spirit warned Chicago. I see things happening in Chicago. I think I even have some specific predictions revolved around that in a moment. There were so many pow pow events that came into fruition on Easter Sunday. Five in total were unalived and 27 people injured in Chicago in one event. And another event, it was one teen who was unalived and three others injured. And yet another event where another teen was unalived and four others injured. And then there was another fatal pow pow that played out in Tennessee. And get this, it was at a, a, a Salem Town coffee shop. Salem. We were just talking about Salem and the eclipses. The 2017 eclipse crossing over seven towns named Salem. The one coming up crossing over two, but passing by six other towns named Nineveh. Just like the Bible again, this will, I'll put all this in my eclipse video tomorrow. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. I don't know. I might do it live. I'm not sure yet. I, don't know, I might do it live, but regardless, it will be tomorrow for sure. I'm already halfway through through mapping it all out. So this, this event in Tennessee, the Pow Pow event, happened at a Salem Town coffee shop. Salem Town? Sound a little familiar again? Like the Eclipse? Town's named Salem? Do you think there's a coincidence there? I don't really think there is. So people are... Truly losing their minds, and worst of all, their respect for life and for others. That's what Spirit said. People, not humanity, not all people, but people, are truly losing their minds. And again, Spirit said, worst of all, they're losing their respect for life and for others. This is very, very much relates to the Hopi prophecy, friends. The Hopi prophecies and the Hopi's warnings that would happen. Remember, I did several videos on that as well. I did one called the Hopi Prophecy. I did one on the planet Nibiru and the Hopi Blue Kachina Prophecy. That video is titled April Warning, April 13th, 2029. So the Hopi told us about all this and that people would lose their mind because they would lose their way with the earth and with the Holy Spirit, the divine spirit, God, whatever you want to refer to it as. And it's in the Hopi prophecy. But Spirit says we're going to see that. And also the Hopi prophecy talks about people walking around our cities. When the, how is this phrase? I forget how it's phrased. It's like walking around our man-made city mountains or something like that. Basically mentioning cities and people walking around like zombies. We see that with the fentanyl crisis. We also see that if you go to a place like New York, for example, they're all looking down at their phone, walking around like a zombie not paying attention to anything that's going on around them. We see all these attacks that are happening in New York. People just randomly running up and punching women. Oh, man, you better hope I never see you do that. <laughs> you just, you better be fast runner. Like, how just, just how awful? How awful? And I, I'm pretty, I don't know who's doing it, but I think it's just American people doing it to other American citizens in New York City. I told you New York City was going to become a third world country. Before something really, really, really not so good happens. Remember all my visions of the past in New York City. The wave, the tunnels collapsing, and not collapsing naturally either, if you know what I mean. So, um, Spirit says to, you know, ensure you that you will be well as long as you don't lose your way. Your way with the earth, connecting with earth, connecting with the energies of the food that you eat, the vegetables that's part of earth, and your connection to the divine. Whatever that is for you, whether it's through prayer, meditation, both prayer and meditation, whatever works for you. But as long as you're doing that and finding your way with the earth is the most important because how are you going to survive on your own if you're not connected to the earth? If you don't know what you can eat, 
what, what, what can help you to survive besides bugs? I don't know about you. I ain't eating no damn bugs. <laughs> Not happening, friends. Not happening. Although we probably all ate bugs many, many times and didn't realize it. As gross as that is, it's probably legit that we probably eat thousands of bugs in our lifetime and don't realize it. But I'm not eating a bug. I remember when we were kids, the chocolate-covered ants were being passed around. I, was, I ain't eating no damn chocolate-covered ant. I don't care. Just because it's covered in chocolate doesn't mean good. <laughs> so I see something um, huge taking place, I believe, in Chicago. And a problem ignited by illegals who were permitted to flow through our gates and bridges, our borders, I mean. But Spirit says something big is happening. Something big is brewing in Chicago. And I think there's going to be booms. And um, more. And I think I have more on this in, in a few minutes in my specific predictions. But I wanted to bring up some other news real quick. Um, we're going way over time, as I usually do every week. Because I just love you all so much. And I just can't quit chattering. The spirits don't stop chattering. So anyway, in other news today, very strange new policies going into effect. For those who use mainly people who, who rent out Airbnbs. And this is stranger than strange, friends. And, and it's going to have you asking the question, what do they know that they're not telling us? Because obviously they know something they're not telling us in this letter. I'm going to read it to you. We are updating our extenuating circumstances policy. Extenuating circumstances policy. The hell is that? And changing its name to make it easier to understand. Oh, so they're changing the name of the extenuating circumstances. And they're going to revise major disrupt. <laughs> The revised major disruptive events, major disruptive events policy, friends. That's what they're calling it. Major disruptive events policy will apply to all trips and experiences taking place on or after June 6, 2024. June 6? What's up with 6-6? Six, six? Six. <laughs> Uh, regardless, so again, let me just read it. The revised major disruptive events policy will take will apply to all trips and experiences taking place on or after June 6, 2024, regardless of when they were booked. What's changing in the policy? Hmm. Foreseeing weather events at the reservation's location are explicitly explicitly eligible for coverage. If they result in any other covered event, such as government travel restrictions or large-scale utility outages. Hmm. The policy may also apply to events in the place where the reservation is located, events that will impact a guest's ability to travel to the reservation are no longer covered. Events that impact a guest's ability to travel to the reservation are no longer covered. So if something happens, a big event or a bridge is taken out and you can't get to your Airbnb, you're not covered. You're screwed. Hmm. Sounds a little shady, don't it? Wow. You continue, your continued use of the Airbnb platform from June 6, 2024 constitutes acceptance of this updated major disruptive events policy. Thank you for being a member of our community. The Airbnb team. That's insane, friends. So like I said, what the heck do they know that they're not telling us? And why June 6th? Why not April 1st? Don't you find this to be a little bit strange or very, very strange? Thank you to Melissa in the comments who shared this or sent, sent, sent it to me. Yeah, in the comments. So thanks, Melissa. I appreciate that. And why not April 1st? Like she said, Melissa said that in her, her comment on, on the video, last week's video, where she posted that letter. That she received because I guess she has Airbnbs. So I'd be really, that's just crazy. That whole policy is crazy. But like Melissa said, why June 6th? Why not April 1st? Why not May 1st? Why not June 1st? Why June 6th? 6624. That's a 666. But really, if we put in 2024, then sounds a little odd, don't you think? I know. No doubt about it.
So I believe that this is um, all right there, friends, right there in pure writing, right in front of your faces, exactly as they say. They know something's coming. They expect it, and they ain't losing money over it either. So if you can't get to your Airbnb, it's too bad for you. If the airlines are canceled or whatever, you're no longer covered. If, it, if that's just not right, that is just wrong, makes me not want to use them anymore, personally. So a huge boycott on Tyson's Foods as they just cut 1,200 jobs while announcing their hopes to hire 42,000 illegals. That they can treat like garbage because that's what they will. They'll treat those illegals like garbage. They'll treat them like, like, like slaves. They'll underpay them. They'll overwork them. They'll take advantage of them while not employing the Americans who live here. This is a big boycott on Tyson's Foods. I don't buy that garbage anyway. I don't eat that garbage anyway. But if you do, maybe you might want to sign up for the boycott. Just saying. Trump Social is going bankrupt. And Spirit confirms it sadly will fail. They could also be bought out very cheaply by another corporation. But I'm going to say bye-bye to Trump Social and his little uh, network, whatever it's called, his telev his media outlet or whatever he calls it. Uh, and now Germans, if you're in Germany and you're depressed, you can go smoke a joint. <laughs> In Germany, they just passed legalization of marijuana. I thought that was interesting. So, you know, Germans, they know that you're, you know, they, they know what's coming. They want to make sure you're high when it happens. They want to make sure you're just high and you sit back and you don't do nothing. All right. Let's move on to a few predictions here for today. Remember, again, tomorrow I will put out an Eclipse prediction video. I have specific predictions of things that Spirit showed me already that I'm saving for that video tomorrow. I see an attack occurring. Several, actually, unfortunately, at big hotels. At least one of these is going to be caused by several illegals igniting a hotel on fire in the United States. I, you know, that just brought a memory to me of a vision I had a while back of somebody going crazy and dumping gasoline all over the big building and then lighting it on fire. I bet you it's related to that. I bet you. Another incident is I was standing on the streets when I hear commotion followed by big bangs, like booms, booms, bangs, whatever. Uh, that either were coming from, I don't know if it was coming from a firearm or some other boom, boom, something, something igniting. In the vision, as I'm standing on the street looking and hearing this, I see smoke billowing out from atop a, a hotel. So this... Um, is in the United States, but I do see similar events playing out in France and potentially the UK as well. It almost seems like they don't want us to travel. Didn't I tell you that a long time ago, friends? They don't want you to travel. They're allowed to drive their private jets and eat their steak and burgers, but you are going to eat bugs and stay within your 15-minute city zone. That is not going to work for people. People are not going to go for this. I don't know what they think they think they're doing. Um, well, they think they own the world. Oh, well, they kind of do, but they don't own us. Free will, baby. Freedom, free will. And when people awaken as they are and we come together, we will be a force to be reckoned with. I look forward. It's going to be exciting. So, yeah, makes you not want to go to hotels or Airbnbs lately now, huh? I plan on doing some travel in the summer, so I, I'm not going to let that stop me. I see a problem for Israel that occurs on the 22nd of this month on maybe even another one right before but on the 22nd what, what is the date they plan to um sacrifice that red heifer on passover isn't passover on the 22nd i think it is hold on let me pull up my calendar real quick i'm like yeah it, it definitely is which happens to be the day before the full moon Right, And that full moon, the 23rd of April, is what Spirit said, another huge tsunami wave of energy is coming in. We got three of them. So we have one that just came in on the full moon, one coming on April 8th, and a bigger one coming at the end it all off at April 23rd. And I feel like something's happening because that red heifer sacrifice that they're doing, they'll succeed in the sacrifice, but I just feel like something, something's happening. Something's happening with Israel on the 22nd, within Israel. Perhaps an attack or something. I had a vision that looked like something out of a horror movie where I saw millions of cicadas, more like something out of even the Bible, coming across the land like a dark 
cloud of evil entities. It's literally what it looked like. It, like the fallen angels coming in and swarming down. I saw planes spraying large amounts of toxic poison in order to control the infestation. I don't know what country this is. It's not here, right? but I, it's overseas somewhere. This poison is going to cause illness and in short time diseases like the big C. And it's going to happen rapidly. And it's going to rapidly develop around the areas that are sprayed. This will have a huge effect on certain commodities such as corn and wheat. Remember what Spirit said way back? Invest in corn. That's just, I forgot all about that. Wonder how that, that was a couple of years ago. Wonder how that's gone. I know some people that some of our tribe do. Uh, I know someone in our tribe, if they're watching today, invests in corn. Let us know how that's gone in the past two years. I'm curious. And wheat. So corn and wheat causing another huge dent in the food chain. This, this is from the cicadas, of course, and the poison. This, along with attacks on ships and ports, all in an effort of China's desire to take over the world trade and for China and our friend Bill Gates and his cult to control the food chain. They will overall fail, says the spirits. Next, moving right along. This is all happening as a design from our good Lord upstairs. So a very well orchestrated event that are going to have people going back to our ancestors' ways of growing our own food. So this all does lead to good. You know, this is really the the good Lord and the divine earth spirits pushing us in back to the ways of the old ways of nature. Just like I the Hopi said, you lose your way with nature, you lose. I love playing in the dirt and gardening and all that. So I don't, I don't know how other people don't do it. I have friends that have yards. I'm like, why do you know I put a garden? Put a couple of tomato plants out or something. Something. It's easy. And it's better and it tastes way better when it comes out of your own backyard, including the fruit on the trees here. It might be small fruit, but it's darn good fruit. This is all happening again. Spirit says it's a great design from our good Lord to bring us back and force us back to growing our own food and doing things on our own fair trade and uh, others. And that reminds me too, because spirit said a long time ago that we would go back to the barter system, the trade barter system. So, so that makes me reminds me of that prediction. So growing our own food, fair trade with others and learning to come together in communities to defy the globalist agenda of a slave planet in which they will get to eat meat and fly to any destination they want, of course, but you, of course, will not. And you'll be happy. <laughs> not. Not happening. The New York Harbor kept coming to my mind extremely strongly. And I would expect some type of a huge event to play out in the New York Harbor in the near future. This feels more to me like an event taking place probably in the late summer months, maybe even in August when we go through that next big energy th cycle. So, but to me again, you know, with April 10th, Mars conjunct with Saturn, it's going to bring about events related to water, bridges, things like that playing out. This could also make sense to some of my past predictions and visions of a major accident occurring and a rescue during a boating race. Remember I said that about a month or so ago. I had a vision of the boating race and this major accident happening and people trying to rescue and just, it was a really interesting vision to say the least. We'll have to see what happens. That was weird. Did you see that light that just flew? That's them with the trash can out front. Blinded, blinded by the light. So yeah, this is what I have, friends. This is what they're showing me, the spirits. And with the whole water thing coming up, I would expect that this would ignite something with underwater volcanoes and earthquakes, as I said in my weather prediction video. If you missed my weather prediction video, I know a lot of people didn't miss that. You might want to check that out. Especially with hurricane season coming. We looked at the hurricanes in that video and... The numbers and what popped out strong, the strongest, both for the uh, Pacific and the Atlantic storms. So check that video out. Tomorrow, again, I have a new video that I will be putting out with eclipse predictions, and I will go in depth with the earthquakes and such because I have information related to the eclipse with that. 
that you're not going to want to miss. But for now, I'm going to leave you with that. And I very much hope that you enjoyed vibing with the tribe. Vibing with the tribe. And if you're new here and you made it this far and you're not vibing with the tribe, then you got to smash that there subscribe. And I thank you for joining us. Welcome to the tribe, baby. We are so glad to have you vibing with us. Thank you for showing your love. A lot of time and effort goes into this, so click that there love button, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the free newsletter down below. And don't forget to keep an eye out for future video tomorrow and what may come soon after tomorrow. Until the next time, my beautiful friends, beautiful souls, remember to find me at josephtittle.com or spiritmanjt.com. Remember to celebrate life, celebrate you. Be kind to others as you wish others be kind to you. And remember to be bold, be true, be kind, be you. Why? Because you're awesome. So get out there and rock out your awesomeness. And have a beautiful rest of your day. Much love. Namaste. Namaste.